Holy smokes, everyone. This is going to be literally the craziest video I have ever made. I'm about to get into something so crazy, so mind-boggling. This will literally make you rethink everything you thought you knew about the financial system. This is a kind of red pill, blue pill moment right now. And this is not a joke, people. I'm being dead serious. The things I'm about to reveal to you and show to you is something I've never seen any major financial YouTuber talk about before. I don't think they dare go down this uh, you know, rabbit hole that I've just been down, that I've been doing huge, huge amounts of research on the past few days. And this is a very, very complex subject that I'm about to talk about but what my goal is is to make it very brief simple so that every American and everyone around the world can understand the biggest con in history that is taking place right now that we are all contributing to and what we are all a part of and it will affect us all okay so you have two choices you can take the blue pill stop this video go back to your normal life thinking that the financial system is free, is transparent, is legitimate, and that people on Wall Street, you know, they're just good, hardworking people, um, and you think that, you know, you, we're living in a democracy, um, a free government, free country, uh, that is run by politicians, or you can take the red pill. Keep watching this video. I'm gonna show you how corrupt, to the core, this whole financial system is, who really owns every little nook and cranny of the financial system who owns you all your assets you think you own your assets i'm going to reveal to you with facts with data that no 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 you don't own them you just have contractual rights or you're just a beneficiary of those assets but i'm going to show you the top secret company the company that you won't hear about in the mainstream media the company that not many people know much about and the company that literally owns America. Okay, everyone, let's get into it. So just to give you a little hint of what we're about to get into, it says here, you don't really own your securities, but can blockchain fix this? And also this article, the secret trillion dollar company that owns America. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm about to take it deep into this subject. All right, but first to understand how we got here, we have to go back to the beginning. And there was a very key important part of time on Wall Street and in the financial system in the 1960s. And what was happening in the 60s is the volume of trading got so crazy. It used to be done all by physical shares or by paper shares uh, back then. But the volumes got so crazy that literally the financial system, Wall Street and the exchanges couldn't keep up. So they needed a solution, a digital solution. So what happened then in 1973, there was something created called the Depository Trust Company. And so listen to this, everyone. This is kind of how it went down. So all this crazy volume led to uh, the New York Exchange to establish a central certificate service, CCS, in 1968 at 44 Broad Street. Yep, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're going to automate the stock certificate of business by substituting a punch card. We just keep with the flood of business unless we do the CC. Uh, S transferred securities electronically, eliminating their physical handling for settlement purposes and kept the total number of shares held by the New York Stock Exchange members. This revealed brokerage firms of the work of inspecting, counting and storing certificates. Hack labeled it top priority. Uh, Five million was spent on it and it was a goal to eliminate up to 75% of physical handling of stock certificates traded between brokers. One problem, however, was that this was voluntary and brokers responsible for two thirds of all the trades refused to use it. Quickly summarize that, pretty much what was happening there is the volumes are getting too crazy and they made a goal to eliminate up to 75% of all physical shares, but lots of brokers refused to do this because they knew what's about to come. So let's keep reading and please everyone, you have to watch this whole video. I guarantee you it's all gonna connect towards the end. So by January 1969, it was transferring 10,000 shares per day and plans for it was to be handling broker-to-broker -broker transactions in 1,300 issues by March 1969. 
In 1970, the CCS service was extended to the American Stock Exchange, and this led to development of the Banking and Securities Industry Committee, BASIC, which represents leading US banks and security exchanges, which was headed by the banker named Herman Beavis, and finally the development of the DTC in 1973. And this is a critical point in time. The DTC stands for this, the Depository Trust Company. And we're gonna to get to this company in a moment. This is very important, everyone. So the DTC was headed by Bill Denser, the former New York State Banking Superintendent. All the top New York banks were represented on the board, usually by the chairman. Basic and the SEC saw this indirect holding system Again, we see this again and again, like the gold standard was meant to be temporary, QE was meant to be temporary, and again with this. So whenever the government says we're going to change something temporary, you should be alarmed. So as a temporary measure on the way to a certificateless society, which we're in now. Today, all physical shares of paper stock certificates are held by a separate entity, Seed and Company. And this seed and company, which I'll get into in a moment, is absolutely crazy. And we'll show you how powerful this institution is in a moment. Okay, so what exactly is this seed and company, or sometimes known as Seed and Co? And how powerful are they? So the company Seed and Co is a specialist United States financial institution that processes transfer of stock certificates on behalf of the depository trust company and Central Security Depository used by United States National Market System, which includes the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and other exchanges together with associated clearinghouses, such as NFCC, the FICC, and DTCC, which we'll get into these three other institutions uh, in a moment, because again, they're all connected. C technically owns substantially all of the publicly issued stock in the United States. So we're going to open this can of worms in a moment, everyone. They don't just technically own all the publicly issued stocks. They do own all the public issued stocks. You don't own them. But I'll prove to you how you don't own them. And I'll prove to you how all of our wealth is being stolen. Just like when they stole all the gold in 1933, when they confiscated people's wealth. There's a confiscation happening right now, and people don't even know about it. Thus, investors do not themselves hold direct property rights in stock, but rather have contractual rights that are part of a chain of contractual rights involving seed. So that's right, you don't own them, seed owns them. All they pretty much do is give you a digital version of that ownership certificate, or just give you contractual rights, or you're just a beneficiary of that stock. But no, 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 you don't own them. But it's not just stocks, let's keep going. So a common misconception is that Seed & Company is merely a facetious legal name used to refer to the Depository Trust Company. In fact, Seed is actually a New York-based partnership of certain employees of the DTC, which we'll get into those employees in a moment. Seed is a separate legal person from the Depository Trust Company, which is owned by DPC participants. And those participants are the brokerages, and all the hedge funds, um, and all the people you do all your stock trades through, who are bank and brokerage houses, like I just said, and not employees of the DTC. Okay, now I know this may seem really complicated, but I'll break it down. I'm, I promise you, you will understand all this by the end of this video. So the seed company is connected to DTC. Now, DTC is where all the stocks and all the assets get deposited. The brokerages don't hold all the assets on their brokerages. It's all held by this company, DTC. But then a master certificate of all the stocks is sent to Seed, and Seed pretty much has a vault of the official ownership, a master certificate of owning all the stocks and assets in existence. But let's get a bit more in depth into this DTC in the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. Okay, so what do we know about this company? Because literally, you look up Seed on Wikipedia, there's about half a page of information. It's very secretive, and if you try to look on the internet about more information about Seed and Company, you won't be able to find much. But the Depository and Trust and Clearing Corporation 
is an American post-trade financial service company providing clearing and settlement services to financial markets. It, ex it performs exchanges of securities on behalf of buyers and sellers and functions as a central securities depository by funding central custody of securities. So again, this is the central organization that holds the deposits for everything. And we'll get into later how some companies have tried to request their security. Say, for example, if a company uh, is private and then it does an initial public offering IPO and it wants to create shares, when those public shares are created, they go to the DTC and then it goes into the master vault of the seed and co company. And there's been instances where the companies have tried to get their shares back from the DTC and they're like, no, we're not gonna give you shares back. They belong to us now. And just quickly, I'll provide all the resources in the link in the description because this is a very, very complicated subject and I can't possibly go over everything in depth in this video, otherwise it'll be hours long. So I will provide all the resources so you can go ahead and study this at your own leisure. And please share this information with everyone because this is mind blowing. So listen to this everyone. In 2011, the DTCC, so the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, uh, settled the vast majority of securities transactions in the United States. Guess what, how much? Guess how much revenue this company is bringing in? It was close to 1.7 quad trillion. Not trillion, quad trillion. That is 1,700 trillions. That is crazy. This is in value worldwide, making it by far the highest financial value processor in the world. And the DTCC operates facilities in New York, metropolitan area, and multiple locations outside of the United States. So some information on the company. It's not a public company, it's a private company. Um, it's a holding company. It was founded in 1999. And it's a holding company for the DTC and the NSCC, which created, which we talked about earlier, the Depository Trust Company uh, in 1973. And we can see here it's revenue 1.7 trillion net income. Uh, these are the huge numbers. I think that's 299 billion. Total assets, this company has around $46 trillion in total assets. Uh, much bigger than any organization, you know, any public traded organization. You know, Apple's like two and a half trillion, and people think that's crazy. These companies that are so big and powerful, you won't even hear about it. The richest people in the world, you won't even know who they are because they don't own the wealth, they just control the wealth. But here, where the rabbit hole gets really weird. So the DTC owns all the assets, but the DTC has a holding company, which is the D Depository Trust Clearing Corporation. And who owns the company that owns everything? Well, banks and brokers, Wall Street. Wall Street own everything because they own the corporations that own everything. And something you have to know about these very, very powerful institutions that run the country, that own all the assets, these are actually self-regulated organizations. The Security and Exchange Commission in 1980 made the DTC a self-regulating operation. So nobody knows exactly what they're doing in the dark, how they're manipulating the markets, and how they're creating these fake derivatives and fake assets. And look at the companies that fall under them. Uh, the FICC, which is the Fixed Income uh, Clearing Corporation, so all the fixed income assets, they don't just own the stocks, but all the bonds, uh, state bonds, mortgage-backed securities, treasuries, they own all of them as well. And all your mortgages, they own. They also own the derivatives. Also, they're getting global, Euro CP LTD. That's a European clearing uh, organization. We can look it up here. Um, Euroclear is a Belgium-based financial services company that specializes in settlement of securities transactions as well as safekeeping assets of these securities. It was founded in 1986 as part of JP Morgan & Co. So again, all these banks, when we look at history, they're really the ones that started all these financial institutions, that funded the governments, that funded the wars, and they're really the ones that are in control people, not the governments. And this was to settle trades on then developing Eurobond market. So again, founded JP Morgan & Co. 
And you know the big uh, credit default swap and the mortgage-backed security crisis? Well, could have this been engineered by this uh, depository trust institution? And also, a lot of people speculated that the 1987 uh, stock market crash was also by a glitch in their system. So it says here, in 2008, the Clearing Corporation and the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation announced C Corp members will benefit from C Corp's netting and risk management processes and will leverage the assets serving capabilities of the DTCC Trade Information Warehouse for credit default swaps, which is what led to the 2008 financial crisis. So the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation entered into a joint venture with New York Stock Exchange known as the New York Portfolio Clearing that would allow investors to combine cash and derivative positions in one clearing uh, house to lower margins. But again, it just gives them more centralized control. Okay, now this is where the pieces of the puzzle start to come together. This is where it gets really cray cray. So most large US brokers and banks are full DTC participants, meaning they deposit and hold securities at the DTC. DTC appears in an issuer's stock records as a sole registered owner of the securities deposited at the DTC. So again, you don't own them, DTC does. Rather, each participant, so that, again, all the participants are the brokerages and the dealers on Wall Street. So whenever you hear participant, think banks and brokers. Owns a pro rata interest in the aggregate number of shares of a particular issue held at the DTC. Correspondingly, each customer of a DTC participant, such as an individual investor, owns a pro rata interest in the shares in which the DTC participant has an interest. But it doesn't just stop there at stocks. You know, the fixed income, that's a huge part of the financial system. So listen to this. So not only does a DTC own all the stocks, but also owns the Fixed Income Clearing Corporation, FICC, which provides clearing for fixed income securities, including treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities. So your mortgage, they own it. Okay, so we can find here, Michael C is President Chief Executive Officer of DTC. And what else is Michael C. Bodson uh, working under? So he currently is a member of the Board of Digital Asset Holdings and is a trustee of our favorite corporation, the World Economic Forum Financial Services Initiative. So again, all these big banks and brokers, they're all very well connected with each other around the globe and all these global entities that they're trying to create now, like the World Economic Forum, like the United Nations, the IMF, um, the World Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, they're all interconnected and they all really kind of own each other. He's also a member of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York FinTech Advisory Group, as well as the Federal Depository Insurance Corporation, FDIC, Systematic Revolution Advisory Committee. So again, all these big, huge, um, unofficial elected uh, elites, they're all on boards of multiple national, huge, um, either American corporations or multinational corporations. Well, who's the owner of the Federal Reserve? Well, if we look here on the actual Federal Reserve's uh, website of who is actually shareholders of the Federal Reserve, because you know there's actually stock in the Federal Reserve, and when the banks want to become part of the Federal Reserve system, they have to buy stock of this uh, Federal Reserve stock. But again, you can't buy or sell or trade it, but they do get a juicy dividend. So as you can see here, it says, the stock may not be sold, traded, or pledged as a security for a loan, and dividends are by law paid to member banks at a maximum rate of 60% determined in part by each member's bank total assets. So who are these member banks? Well, approximately 38% of the 8,039 commercial banks in the United States are members of the Federal Reserve System. National banks must be members. State charter banks may join if they meet certain requirements. The member banks are stockholders of the Reserve Bank in their district and as such are required to hold at least 3% of the capital as stock in the Reserve Banks. So you can see here, all these commercial banks and Wall Street bankers, they own the Fed, which creates the money supply, and they also own the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, which owns all assets in existence, like all the stocks, the fixed income assets, the treasuries, the mortgage-backed securities, everything. So we think 
you know, that we're, we're free here in America in the Western society and we have capitalism, you know, with democracy, but we're being lied to. What happened is throughout history, they've stolen all the real hard assets. They had real money like gold and silver, then they gave us paper. Then they, you know, they start wars and then they go broke. So then they confiscate that real um, money, the gold and silver, and they give you paper money like in 1933. Uh, then they increase the value of gold straight after they buy it from you. They brought it for $20 uh, per ounce of people. Then after they brought it, they increased it to $35. And then they completely removed the gold standard in 1971. And they just gave people paper currency that's not backed by anything. And now what we're going into is a digitalization of the whole financial uh, monetary system, a great reset, if you will. And they're completely trying to destroy cash because they want to be able to track and trace everything. And it's not really conspiracy theory anymore. They're just blatantly saying it now uh, because they know that people aren't going to do anything anyway. People are too lazy these days. And what that means is they'll just be able to digitalize assets more and more Use this fake money to buy more and more of the real hard assets and everything you own. And we all know that blatantly said it, that you own nothing and be happy by year 2030. So what they could do through this DTC and C company is call in all those assets that they own. They've got the contractual rights and all these banks, they could call in all these loans. Not saying they will, but they have the power to do it at any time. And all your money in the bank, they've got bail-in laws where they can just take that cash and you can't do anything because when you deposit that money with the bank, you're giving it to the bank. And they're taking your real assets and they're speculating. Look what they're doing here. So this here, naked short selling, it's illegal. And this is what's causing the GameStop saga and the AMC saga because all these retail investors are starting to become aware of what they're doing and they're trying to expose how rigged the financial system is. So look at this. Several companies sued the DTC Without success, again, because they're so powerful, you know, you can't do anything. You're just a peasant to them. Um, over delivery failures in stocks, alleging culpability for naked short selling. So what means is they say, oh, can I have my stocks back? Um, and the DTC is saying, no, you don't own your stocks anymore. We own them. We're not going to give them. I don't care. They've got so much power. They're self-regulated uh, organization. They don't have to do anything, people say. Furthermore, the question of whether the DTC is culpable for naked short selling was raised by Senator Robert Bennett at North American Securities Administrator Association, NASA, and discussed in articles in the Wall Street Journal and Euromoney, uh, the DTC contended that the suits were orchestrated by a small group of lawyers and executives to make money and draw attention from companies' problems. Well, no, 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 this, this isn't just having been a few people. You can look it up. I don't have time to get in all of them, but there's been many companies, um, you know, complain about this. And naked short selling, it's shorting stocks that don't even exist. And they can't cover their shorts because, like, for example, GME, it was short 140%. So the only way these short sellers win is if this company goes bankrupt. So that way they don't have to cover their shorts. So critics blame the DTCC, so again, that's the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, noting that it is the organization in charge of systems where naked short selling happens, alleging that the DTC turned a blind eye to the problem, saying that the Securities and Exchange Commission has not taken sufficient action against naked shorting. People, the Security and Exchange Commission, they're not there to protect us from the financial institutions. They're there to protect the financial institutions from us. The DTC responded that it had no authority over trading activities, oh yeah, right, and could not force buy-ins of shares not delivered, and suggested that naked shorting was simply not widespread enough. Well, look what's happening now with GME and AMC. It's all over the news. It's everywhere. It is widespread uh, to be a major concern. The SEC, however, viewed naked shorting as sufficiently serious matter and have two separate uh, efforts to restrict the practice. The DTC has said that the SEC has supported its position in legal proceedings. And listen to this. Look what happened in 2007, everyone. Uh, Senator Bob Bennett, a Republican of Utah, suggested the U.S. Senate floor that the allegations involving the DTCC and naked shorting were serious enough to warrant a hearing. And look what happened. This just shows you the blatant obvious corruption right in front of our face. But people aren't watching, they're blind. The Senate Banking Committee Chairman, Sec uh, Senator Christopher Dodd, indicated he was willing to hold such a hearing. 
no such hearing was ever held. However, representing state stock regulators, the NASA filed a brief in 2009 suit against the DTCC, arguing against federal uh, precedent. So NASA said that if investors' claims are taken as true, they must be on a motion to dismiss, then the entrepreneurs and investors before the court have been victims of fraud and manipulation. This is why it's so important. They're manipulating all the stocks. Everything in the financial system is 100% manipulated, and they're getting away with it. At the hands of the very entities that should be serving their interests by maintaining a fair and official national market. The suit was dismissed. Critics also contended that the DTCC and SEC were too secretive. Again, they are secretive. The SEC, you know, they just make these um, bodies, these things to look like, you know, they're doing something. They don't do anything. They'll, you know, give a few fines here and there. Look up the fines for the companies that have got caught manipulating the markets, like JP Morgan manipulating the precious metals market. These banks, they get speeding fines. The fines they get compared to the amount of money they're making is nothing. So it says the DTC and the Securities Exchange Commission were too secretive with information about naked shorting was taking place. And the DTC and the DTCC said it supported releasing more information to the public, which it obviously didn't do. So everyone, let's quickly go over this article that summarizes everything that we're just talking about. Um, it says here that if blockchain technology accomplishes nothing else in capital markets, is at least drawing attention to an unsettling fact in the United States, publicly traded stocks does not exist in private hands. So it proves it here, it doesn't exist. So it says it's not owned by the people that purchase the shares of the company, uh, which they're led to believe. Technically, all they own is an IU, the true ownership lies elsewhere. While private company stock is still directly owned by shareholders, nearly all publicly traded companies and entities um, and the majority of bonds are owned by a little known partnership Seed and Co., which we talked about at the start, which is the nominee of the Depository Trust uh, Co., a depository that holds securities for some 600 brokers, dealers, and banks. For each security, Seed and Co. owns a master certificate known as a global security, which never leaves its vault. Transactions are recorded as debits and credits to DTC members, securities, accounts, but the registered owner of the security, Seed and Co., remains the same. So everyone, I'll probably just overload your brain with so much information. Again, I'll put all the resources and references in the link in the description. Please go out there and research this. Share this with your family and friends. This is so important. But just a quick summary to put it very simple. Every asset, every stock, every derivative, everything is becoming financialized and is becoming some kind of financial asset. And we think that we own them. We don't own them. There is one global entity Seed & Co. that owns everything. And these global elites are becoming more and more powerful by the day. In 2020, we lost so much of our freedoms and liberties. And the amount of freedoms and liberties we are losing is at an alarming and crazy rate. And the wealth inequality and wealth distribution is getting worse. Every boom-bust cycle that they engineer, they steal wealth and they steal the real hard assets from us, the people, and it has to stop. There has to be more people like myself and other financial YouTubers have to speak out about the corruption that is happening right before our eyes. And a reason why this isn't so important, because again, like I said, you think the people in the 1920s thought that the gold would be confiscated? They'd probably tell you, no, the government would never steal my gold. The government would never take it. Pfft, you're crazy. What do you think would happen if we entered into some other kind of crazy war? Look, the, the Pentagon's finally coming out, you know, that a UFOs are real and, you know, they've got sightings, which sounds kind of crazy. But imagine if, you know, they just come create some other kind of false flag event saying, look, we're going to war with the aliens or something, so you need to give us all your money or you're all going to die. You know, it sounds crazy and laughable, but who knows, it could happen. Or, you know, if there's another world war that we go to China with. And like what they pitched the people in 1933, saying, give us your gold or we're going to lose the war. They could say the same thing with all your stocks and your assets and confiscate your wealth and usher in the Great Reset and we'll all own nothing and hopefully be happy. So everyone, I hope this video was informative and eye-opening for you. I hope I made it simple enough um, and communicated it well enough for you to understand what's going on. Of course, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. 
If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'll keep you updated on the latest that's happening in the financial system. And if you're bored, I'll put up some of my other videos here. I'll see you there.